Right then guys, welcome back. Here we are, part three, and it's still Saturday, and it's still Saturday morning just. So, um, right, if you remember, we've done this bulkhead, that one's there. We've done this bulkhead, that one's there. We've got the centre bulkhead there with nothing to do to it. So I'm going to glue all these in now, and then we're going to put the fuselage together and let it sit and let these dry. So I'm going to get the one I've got with the with the rods already in it, and it looks like these are a lovely fit. So yeah, that is a lovely fit in there. Okay, so that fits in there nicely. Um, I'm not going to glue anything yet because you can see it's got a lot of play. And uh, what I want to do is make sure when I fit it that I get it um, that I get it square. So what I'll do is put the other one on other side on first. Now this one here we need to make sure we get it the right way round. It goes in with these bits we glued on facing back. I mean I guess it doesn't really matter because it does look like it's symmetrical, but hey ho. So that's going in like that. And then, excuse the noise, next door is having a patio done, which I think is absolutely crazy because it's like minus two outside. And as we all know, mortar and minus two ain't gonna mix very well. So uh, I expect their patio will be crumbling come the summer. There we go. I'm sure there's additives you can get for mortar these days, but I'm not sure if any, any of it would work down to minus two. So we can see here that those that bulkhead there is in place because we've got those there. And also I can see there because of that, I can't glue that one in. So what I'm going to have to do is take this apart again. And I'm going to put a drop of cement in there. And then just glue this one in that fits in there quite solid and it's the same with this one this one's quite solid so I can get some glue oops throw my brush across the floor right and there we go And the forward bulkhead is also on the floor. So we're trying to throw the model away before we've even finished it. And I'll tell you what, I will glue that one in to save it keep falling out. And then what we'll do is we'll get it all aligned. Let you glue it in there. We'll get it all aligned. Let me get the whole halves together. And then we'll just leave that to set off before we come to our next bit of the grand assembly of this beautiful model. If you are watching this and you don't already know and you're in the UK, you can get this from Premium Hobbies in Western Supermare. That's the company there. Um, £91.50 delivered in mainland UK. So uh, that's through DHL. So, and that's, uh, yeah, pretty well, I mean, this, this came to me less than 24 hours, so I was happy with that. So there we are, that's the, that's those bulkheads in place. I think I'll just put a rubber band, if I can get hold of it. I'll just put a rubber band around the, in the middle just to hold it all together. And perhaps a peg on the bow hold that together make sure that bulkhead's in there nicely in fact I'm also going to put a rubber band around there because that is wanting to spring apart I'm very conscious with this bow what's going on because as I mentioned in part two I have seen people having issues with a fit on the bow and this one seems to have gone together lovely now the only thing I've done that I didn't see anyone else do is I did that sanding like I do on trailing edges on wings so it could be that the plastic in this area here is uneven. I don't know. Maybe when I sanded it, it was just enough to sort it out. But um, 
<coughs> something to <coughs> something to bear in mind. It's something to bear in mind. My voice just went all squeaky then. It's more squeaky than it normally is. So that's what happens when you don't talk to anybody. You uh, your voice goes. With this lockdown and stuff, we don't go anywhere, I don't see anyone. The only people I speak to is you guys. And it's sort of a bit of a one-way conversation, really, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, there we are. So that's that together. So those bulkheads can cure off in there now. And then we're going to have a hull that's, uh, that's going to be good to go. I'm going to put this rubber band on double. Oh, I've got a text message. Somebody wants to speak. So there we are. Uh... There we go. Let's go along like that. We can roll that rubber band up. It'll probably snap because of rubbish. That just holds that centre together properly like that. There we go. And if you didn't see part two, looking at all these bits down in here, what they are, they're basically bits of plastic strip. Glue this side, then that side, then this side, then that side. And it's basically just keying it all together and it's keeping the, the joint nice and level on the bottom and it's keeping it strong rather than having it all flopping about. So that's what that's all about. Okay, so we'll let that dry and then we'll uh, be back. Right, questions and answers time. So in video one, um, a couple of things were raised and I've said I'll answer them in video three. So anything that gets raised from video two will get answered in video four, that kind of thing. So, um, the plastic card, I talked about this plastic card having a glossy side to it um, and obviously I didn't explain myself very well. Um, it's not because it's got a glossy side to it that it doesn't glue, I, and this is just my opinion, I believe that the fact that it's got a glossy side to it is showing that it's not actually pure styrene. Now if we look at something like this for example, okay, this is dull on both sides, it's not shiny. And I know for a fact that if I stick this down with Tammy Extra Thin or whatever, it sticks like the proverbial to a blanket. If I laid that on there with some Mr. S with the Mr. S with Extra Thin or the Mr. Cement S, left it for five minutes, when I peel it off, it would literally be really difficult to peel off and it would actually um, sort of melt its way in, okay? With this stuff, it would just peel off. It would just peel off almost like I've stuck it down with PVA and it doesn't, I mean this would get attacked, but it doesn't seem to attack it. So what I'm saying is I think this is possibly ABS. I don't know. Um, I ended up with this one rogue sheet. It was an A3 sheet and I just got this one rogue sheet and it just doesn't seem to glue the same as normal styrene sheet. And as I say, it's not because it's glossy. What I'm saying is the difference between this one and this one is the fact that this one's glossy and this one isn't. This one sticks really well and this one isn't. So what I'm saying is I think the glossiness indicates that it's perhaps not pure styrene, um, whereas this will be pure styrene. So in future, I will always buy what's claimed to be pure styrene. Or if you get it in your Plastruct pack or, or your Evergreen pack, then you know it's going to be right. This could be some sort of thin bloody building material. I don't know. Now I could go out and get better glues. You can get better glues for ABS. Um, there are some really hot glues out there that um, like plumbers use and stuff for plastic piping and uh, and that would no doubt work. But I don't want to use different glues. I just want to use the glues I use and, and do this. It's the same with painting. Um, people will say, uh, you know, well, you can use MIG ammo paint. You just have to put it on very, very thinly and go very, very slowly and let it build up. Let it build up really, really slowly and do, you know, five, six or seven coats rather than your normal two or three. Why? <laughs> Why? I just carry on using Tamiya because I can do it in two or three. You know, it's, if you spray something like this and you want to let it build up slowly, then absolutely fine. But... If you're doing, say, a truck chassis you've built, you've got all your axles and springs and everything, you don't want to be going over that five, six or seven times. You know, you just want to be able to spray that once or twice and, and get some colour into it. Um, yeah, I don't see the point in changing all your techniques just to enable you to use another product. If you're happy with what you, you ha if you're happy with your techniques and the products you've got, why change? That's what I'm saying. Anyway, um, Steve Clark commented, uh, the props 
when he saw my review, he said the props look a little flimsy. Would I show them again? So here we are, Steve. Here they are here. Uh, what I'm going to do is put a rule next to it so you've got some sort of scale. And I'm not sure if what you're saying is they're too dainty or if they're actually physically too small. So there we can see there's a rule next to them. I mean, they are very, very finely moulded. Um, I've had a look at the image in the... Well, you can see an image online of the divers um, around the, the, the stern of the U-boat with all the fishing nets all wrapped around it. And they look pretty good to me. Um, to me, they look fine. But uh, I'd be interested to hear why anyone or Steve would think they're not. So there we go. So that's the questions answered from... The review slash part one no doubt there'll be more questions coming um and that's what i'll do and please don't email me questions because i simply don't have the time to sit down and write answers to them and everything um i had a question yesterday emailed to me um what do i recommend for uh, getting going with modeling with paints i mean <laughs> that is just that 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 debate could go on for hours so um, I just said you need to, you know, and I'm to I can't remember the guy that wrote it to me now, but to whoever it was that wrote it, I'm sorry, but I can't spend an hour sitting down writing a really really long answer to your to your query. It's just uh, it, it's not it's not something that can be answered like that. Um, painting is, you know, one man's favourite paint is the next man's bloody. I mean, I can't stand Migamo paints. I can't stand them. Um, I had a couple, I've thrown them away. I'm not very fond of Vieco paints. Some people love them, okay? Um, my favourite paint, up until now, my favourite paint is AK Real Colour. I love the way that stuff goes down. It's really, really good. This stuff here, not the AK bottle paint. I can't stand that stuff. It's bloody awful. Um, this one here, this is the AK Real Colours. And this is very much like a, a sort of deluxe version of Tammy Acrylics. But now I have just got into these and I've, I haven't even tried them yet. And these are the Tamiya lacquer paints. Apparently they are amazing. But the only problem is, is, jeez, oh, is the smell. So this is why I'm not working on the B-52 at the moment. I need to be doing a lot of work and weathering and finishing off all the black paint and everything. But I need the extraction on and I need the windows open to have the extractor on and it's just too cold. So that's why I'm not working on that. And the other thing is I'm also working on the Titanic. So I'm making loads and loads of dust from sanding and everything. So every time I want to do any finished painting or, or anything, I have to completely clear the bench, vacuum everything, get rid of all the dust and then go from there. Because I can't paint the B-52 in the booth because my booth isn't the size of a house and the B-52 is. So God knows how I'm going to manage when I, or if I ever get around to that 48 scale one. Anyway, enough waffling. There we go, that's those, that's those things answered. So the shiny plastic, it's not because it's shiny that it doesn't stick. It's just, I'm using the fact that it is shiny, indicates to me that it's something different than normal styrene. And the prop, Steve, let me know what you think. Right, so our stand is here now and it's kind of, kind of going off. It's not ready for paint yet because it's still not absolutely rigid. So I think I'm going to leave that to go off a little bit harder. Now this here we've just done like sort of 10, 15 minutes ago. So I'm going to let that go off a bit more. I'm going to have a cup of coffee and then I'll come back and we'll push on. Okay, pressing forward now. So while that hole, while those bulkheads are drying, we'll have a look at this um, exhaust and intake ducting. I've taken the pegs off. That's been there for sort of, I don't know, 18 hours now. So we're going to look at sanding these um, these tubes to get them nice and round and get rid of any witness of any seam. Now, beginner alert here. If you're if you're not a beginner and you don't want to see this, then fast forward. Um, a common myth with sanding round parts and removing seams and everything is to go in with a sponge. This is a a skinny sponge from Flory, um, and the common myth is to go in and just sand the seam with this. I disagree. The problem being is, I'm going to try and demonstrate with a pen, um, nice big thick pen. So this is what we've got. We've got a round part here. We've got a bit of a mismatch, say, and we've got a bulge of plastic there. So if we go in there with a sponge, what happens when you use a sponge? It 
it actually goes around the part like that okay so it will distort to whatever part wherever it sees so it'll put pressure here it'll put pressure there and it'll put pressure there so what you will end up with just by using a sponge you will end up with exaggerated you'll end up with this kind of thing okay so you've taken that top off of there you've and you've rubbed away there so you've rubbed away there rubbed away there and taken the top off there so what you need to do is get that to be this kind of shape okay and then and by doing that what you can do is sand away that flat area there perhaps get a put a bit of a flat on here to get rid of the mismatch so what you're doing is you're going to end up with a rounded shape and then we can come in with a sponge and get it nice and round so what I'm going to do I'm going to use this stick we've got some sprue nibs on here you can see the sprue nibs now I never remove sprue nibs from seams before I start because it's just as easy to do them both together okay so we've got sprue nibs there sprue nibs there so first thing I'm going to do is remove these sprue nibs so just using this stick this is a hard obviously very hard stainless steel photo etch infini sander okay and then we can just run along that seam and because it's not a very coarse grit it's taking hardly anything off but it will remove that raised portion of sprue nib okay so we can just go over that joint now and the other thing we want is something with a nice hard edge on it so that we can get these corners nice and sharp because remember these are straps so you want them to look like straps you don't want them to look like molded on lumps of plastic which they are you want them to look like straps now that one there is proving to be a bit difficult to remove so I'm going to get my five millimeter all it is is this here is is a bit uh, worn out perhaps if I use the back end of it that's better and the other thing you're looking for here is a white line if you see a white line appear that means you haven't got enough glue all you need to do is just put some glue on let the capillary take it in um, and what I'm talking about not a white line from dust building up on an edge but an actual like the seam looks like a white line going through the middle of it that'll be when you've not got enough glue in there so come around and whoops just take this nib off of here yeah it's um unfortunately that stick has seen better days I need to replace the um I need to replace the emery on it the well not the emery the uh the self adhesive abrasive paper it's an infini product it does last a very long time I don't know if you saw the review when I did the review of these PE sanding sticks that's the first lot of paper I've got on there and I've never changed it so you can see how long it's lasted as I was saying with in part two with that David 400 you get the um the paper that comes with the set it doesn't last very long at all it just wears out extremely quickly okay so now we've got those edges gone so now we've got no step we've got no sprue nibs if we can get in with that one yeah look at that that's perfect and I haven't used a sponge at all okay so we've got that all smoothed out I'm going to get into these corners and just sand into the corner to keep that sharp on that strap notice I haven't done the top so I'm not doing the tops yet then I can come in with this skinny sponge and just go over because we've got the round shape there already I'm okay to uh, go over with a sponge and not worry about ending up with any weird wonderful shapes get tight into that corner at the bottom tight into the bottom of that strap and there we are now in the middle I'm not sure if this will go through yes it will so all we need to do in the middle is just gently stroke in there just to get rid of any glue that's oozed out okay and then for that bit in there I'm just going to scrape scrape away that seam we've also got to work on that one there haven't we so we'll just come around there and just 
those and the top of those level nice and flat and there we are now with my knife I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to thin out that edge just to put in a bit less of a a cone look and have it more Same down here. Now what I might do here is get a, a little round file in there and um, and file it out. So have we got a circular file here? Nope, that's a square. Every time I want a square file, I end up just picking up rat tails. Here we go. So if we go in here, it's blanked off at the bottom. So we can't get in there with a the file anyway. So we're going to have to use a little drill or a burr or something. Let me see what I've got and then we'll come back. Okay, I've got some tools here now. And um, these are called burrs. Okay, if you ha haven't got any in your arsenal, get some. Um, and if you're watching this Ed from Premium, I think you should get some of these in. Because I find them to be a very, very useful tool. And a lot of people have seen me use them in a lot of different applications. Like these, if you're into model ships. Th this is a 3 millimeter. um round-ended straight burr okay and that will basically go you can go in the back of your portholes or model ships and thin the plastic out and make it look thinner um, you can also use it on aircraft and all sorts of things and then you've got this one here for taking out like we're going to use on here you've got this here for chamfering and removing burrs from the back of holes and then there's a basically a smaller version of the same thing so what I'm going to do with these if I look at that I know that I've got the diameter there I can go down inside and not come through so I'm just going to use that one there just go in and open that out to make it look a bit more realistic because this would basically be a, a, a sheet metal sort of tube um, whereas it's molded as a, a great big thick lump obviously because that's the way molding restrictions work. I'll do the same here go down inside this one and you might be thinking oh why don't you just use a drill well the beauty of these is if you notice when you when you use a drill sometimes it sort of corkscrews its way in well, these don't. If you don't push, you just gently rub like that. The thing I, would rec I wouldn't recommend is using the power tools that are fast because they, um, they'll, they'll produce too much heat. Okay, so we've gone in there roughly five millimetres. And then if we put matte black paint in there, that will hide any anything. Now you can see down in there now when you look in the end. Where are we? When you look in the end, you can see where I've removed all the material and how I've thinned it out. So I'm going to go in with this ball on the top and just try and reproduce this chamfer, this, this um, flange that's on the top. Now this one here, this cone, tends to not want to cut. It's, it just wants to dig in, so I have to be a little bit careful with this one. Okay, then go back in with this ball again. Take some more out of the top. Remember stuff like this, like your ship models with funnels and things like that. All of this is the stuff right on the top that everybody looks at. And, you know, if you're not going down the photo etch route and all the aftermarket and spending thousands of pounds. Or you can't afford to or you just don't want to. This is the way to sort of take your model just that little bit further. And make it just look that better than, you know, the one next to it that was built out of the box. You can make it look better. And even if there's one next to it that's got all the resin, all the photo etch and everything in the world, you know, your, your model could still look better because I'm afraid some people seem to think that photo etch is, I mean, I've been asked this question before. Some people think photo etch is the be all and end all to ending up with a really good model. Like there will be a panel, like these bits here, okay? These bits here are moulded on these, I'm guessing they're stiffeners. You can see they're moulded on there. Now if Edward came out with a photo etch set for this, they would probably include those in photo etch. Okay, so you can look at them in plastic, you can see the rivets. And what they would do, they would give you those with embossed finish on them, and you'd have the rivets poking out. And what they'd want you to do is shave that off, sand it away, and then fit them on in photo etch brass. My question is, what's the point? They're perfectly good. The rivets are perfectly good. If you try and cut them off and sand them off, you're going to lose all your rivet detail. If you, you know, if you don't get the others on straight, they're not going to look as good. If they ping off, it, 
why change that? It's just to, for the sake of it. Um, however, if Dasberg have put five in there and there should only be four and they should be wider and they should be shorter, then yeah, replace them with photo etch to correct them. But just to replace panels with photo, it's like you get on aircraft models, you'll see like refueling pa panels and stuff replaced with photo etch. I don't see the point. If it's a nice molding and it's nice and sharp and clean, I don't see the point in replacing it. So that's me going off on a tangent again. So what I'm saying is if you've, if you've built a model properly and you've thinned out all the relevant areas and you've got all the seams nice and all your weathering and painting's good, it could easily win in a competition against a poorly built model with all the extras thrown at it. So, you know, if somebody builds a model with all the extras, resin, photo etch, everything, and their paint job is rubbish or their decals are all silvered, then you're going to beat it. So that's it. And the other thing is you can enter the out of box category. You can do stuff like this and still enter the out of the box category. So uh, that's worth remembering as well. There we go. And there we can see how much how much improved that is. Now I'm assuming that's the exhaust because it's the higher one. But we can see now they've got a massive improvement on the top of there. Okay. If you want to go a bit deeper, because you can see that shoulder down in there, we can always go a bit deeper. But believe me, when that's painted matte black, you won't see that down in there. We'll get all some sooting going and everything on it. We're going to try and thin out a little bit more. You've just got to be careful because you, if you go too far, you, 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 you can pull it back, but it's very, very difficult. And there we are. I'm happy with that now. So with this one here, we'll do the same thing again. Put this cutter down inside. Just open it out a bit. I'm conscious this might be a bit too big. Be careful not to uh, go crazy with it. So that's five mil. See, that's 5.8. So it's, it's sort of a bit touch and go, really. So I'll just go a little bit further, just up to behind that clamp. This really is taking it to the edge. That's going a bit too far. And I've got this bigger one here, which will work on the top. And then this one here should go in and just give us the transition. I'm turning it backwards to try and give it something to work with. We'll be careful here is not to, if you push too hard, you'll just spring everything apart. Pull that out so that it's not fouling on the, uh, on the exhaust. It's just picking up. It doesn't want to cut at all. But I think we're getting somewhere with that. Backwards, see if it will actually take anything backwards. It should just scrape something off. But I'm conscious I don't want to just keep going because it will dig in and it will actually split the parts open. That's the problem. Okay, so maybe I can get in there with that one and take some material out. But uh, it certainly looks one hell of a lot better than it did.
there we go so what I'm going to do is run some extra thin round inside there and then uh, that'll be that there we go that's them done and I think you'll agree I mean with the light shining down it doesn't look as good but if I if I dim the light there we go then you can see that looks so much better than having those great big thick lumps of plastic on the top so uh, like I say guys a couple of little few minutes just spent doing your little improvements can make a model uh, jump make it pop so that's them done we've done the seams on the side one more little tip because I have been asked this question before how do I deal with these straps take this blade here this is a number 10 uh, I think it's a number 11 if you use an exacto or something and literally with no pressure just go around and just rub the corner of the blade into the corner there where the seams are and anything that's oozed out any mismatch anything that's there will just be rubbed away bearing in mind you've already gone in with a sander so what is actually left is just a tiny little radius in the corner if you like so there we can't sort of get in with a knife so we have to go like that and then just down there all those edges just like that just rub them over no pressure you're not trying to scrape you're just trying to well you are trying to scrape you're just scraping a tiny little bit of it away and then I've got a sponge here I'm going to go over that edge and then we can just go over this with a 1000 grit sponge just to make sure everything's nice and tidy and there we are job done guys and that is looking much much better and then once again I'll come along with my Mr Cement S dry the brush off you don't want it soaking wet and just run it around the inside and that will remove any hairy bits because we don't want hairy bits do we <clears throat> that remove any hairy bits from there or any fluff or anything and also we want to get inside here and just remove any any little lumps or steps or whatever from in there and the same on that clamp there because you can guarantee you can't see them now but as soon as you put primer on it they'll stick out like a sore thumb and one of these is going to be painted light grey this one's going to be painted light grey which is basically a primer colour and it's going to make you know how your your resin stuff and everything when you put a grey primer on it it really makes all the detail pop well it works like the other way as well when you put a great light grey paint on it it makes all the uh, imperfections pop so uh, there we are <laughs> happy with that so we'll leave that and then we'll start looking at something else looking at the instructions here we've got the, the actual let's call it the snorkel going in to this base part here which I've got the nibs off and everything I actually found there was a little piece of flash on there yep only piece of flash I found in the kit so far so we're going good so we've got that ledge in the bottom there and that's going to catch it so as it goes down it goes down and then if you want to bring it up it comes up and that ledge at the bottom stops it going forward so that's that bit taken care of and that is going to fit up into our main deck like so like so okay and then the you can have those staying up or down now a bit of a problem there <laughs> bit floppy don't like things floppy do we so we're gonna have to try and do something about that um, I think what I might do is stick some plastic card around the outside of it once it's in just to give it a bit of friction um, so yeah if it's folded down you could leave it down and have your model displayed like that or you could just come along with something just lift it up and then you should be able to lift it out of there like so it looks like those clasps are just too wide to go through the the holes oh no they do go through okay so we're going to need to um, look at something now this here is going to be the pressure hull so that'll be the actual hull of the u-boat uh, underneath there and then this decking just all lies on top so what you might wish to do is drill out all these holes in here or thin it out from behind so they end up being holes personally I'm just going to go for matte black um, normally I would actually thin it all out and make all the holes as you know 
but um, it's going to weaken this so much and it will take forever to do and also some of those holes aren't uh, round they're square so that will make life very difficult um, so yeah you could come in just removing these nibs you could come in with a um, with a, 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 a burr or something on the back and, and grind away from behind or I believe, looking online, I believe RC Subs is coming out with a photo etch set for this. So, and I believe, looking at the images I've seen, that he's got the actual deck part is um, taken care of. If any of you are looking at the RC Subs stuff, if you look at the stuff for the 148 scale trumpeter kit, um, You've got the actual main set with all the deck and everything on it. That was his work. And then I got in touch with him when he'd done that. And then I, I bought that set. And I worked with him. And helped him design the other set. Which has got all the, uh, the correct torpedo doors and everything in it. Because on that Trumpeter 148th kit the doors are... They've basically copied the Revell kit. So all the mistakes you've got in the Revell kit are just the same on the Trumpeter 148. So the like the anchor position is too far back or forward, I can't remember now. Um, the flooding ports, the ones that are up here on the front of the hull, they're all in the wrong place. Um, so yeah, he's... We, we kind of worked together on that one. So he came up with that set. And I've got it all here. I did actually buy it. I didn't get it for free. Even though I helped him put it together. Um, I must review it one day as well. Because it's all here. I've also got... I made the... Um, the pressure hull. I made the ends of that myself from plastic card. I basically got one of Jess's rubber balls. One of her heavy, heavy rubber balls and I got a piece of plastic card, heated it up over the gas stove, put it on top of an empty dog food tin and then pushed the rubber ball down into it and that made the, the spherical end. I'll show you all one day what I've done. Um, but again, that kit has got so much wrong with it that I just gave up and put it in the loft. Okay, enough waffling. Um, just suffice to say, that 48 scale trumpeter U-boat has uh, got quite a few issues. Right, so I want to get some black paint on this, get some black primer on there. We'll get this primed as well. Uh, this down in here is actually the um, the pressure hull. Um, but I might have said that already. I also want to get some black paint in here so that when we're looking through that it's all, um, it's all nicely painted and everything. And we're not going to be looking at any grey plastic. So... Uh, I'll get that done and then I'll come back. I'm going to use, do, 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 what am I going to use? I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use this um, MIG ammo one shot, which is basically Badger Steiner Res. I'm having some troubles with it because it's so thick. So I just give it a gentle shake and then we'll end up with some sludge at the bottom and throw it away. But uh, that's what I'm going to use for this, basically because it's bloody freezing outside. I don't want the windows open and this doesn't smell too bad. So I won't stick the house out. So I'm going to get this done and then I'll be back. Painting is done. So we've got the inside there of the, uh, that's the chamber for the, the tubes. They're all done. And that's done in Steiner Res. We've also got the tubes themselves over here. And as we can see, they've come out lovely. You've got the ends there all thin and everything. You can see now when you've got the, uh, the paint on there, it looks so much better. And they're all nice and thin. We've got no, effort, no um, witness of any seams or anything in there. And that's because I glued them together first. So glue them together first, let the seams go off for 18, 24 hours, whatever, and then you can sand them. Uh, if you have to do any filler work or anything, leave it a little bit longer. But um, yeah, if I'd have actually glued that together this morning, I'd now be waiting till tomorrow before we could press forward. So that's why I do things like that before we start. Um, and also I've gone around the inside of the hull. You can see if I take this apart. There we go. I've gone around the inside of all these flooding ports and um, 
painted all in black, gone round the inside of there. I actually used Viejo on this because I, I didn't see the point in wasting Stone or resin and stuff like this. So I just wanted to get it black so that if you look in, because you can guarantee that if you didn't do it, if somebody was looking at the model finished and they shine a light on it, you would see grey plastic in there. There would be grey plastic on an edge somewhere. So gone in now, sprayed it at angles, all the different angles, the four angles. So the holes, you can see the paint has come through here. So those holes now are all framed in black. Uh, another thing worth noting, if you are building this with your doors open, I'm not sure if you see it once the doors are on, but in here, um, I need to find a light source to go behind it. But if you, you've got this torch, come here, torch, there we go. If I put a light in behind it, you will see, there you go, you can see that there's gaps down the side of those torpedo tubes. So if you are having your doors open, you might just want to put some sprue goo or a bit of filler or something in behind here uh, just to fill those gaps in because um, in behind here because, uh, you know, it, you don't want to see light coming through because there, there's all these hole, all these holes are going to give light through. There are some holes up in this area here, so you don't want to do that. And um, doing this work on the, on the hole really does pay off. I mean, look at this. Putting it together, right? Line that centre bulkhead up in its slot. Look at that. There we go. It's together, and it's really difficult to pull apart. I'm actually pulling it, and it's quite difficult to pull apart. So, um, yeah, as I say, doing all that work on the bottom and putting those um, putting those supports in the way I did really does pay off in the end. So. I think we're kind of ready to start looking at getting the whole glue together now. Um, oh, and I've also painted underneath here with the black because when you look up, when you look through there, especially with some of these holes in the stern, they're very high up. You you might see the grey plastic. It, it you may think you won't, but if somebody puts a light on it, it will stick out like a sore thumb. So um, that's why I always go in behind with the black. Right, so, and I need to look at where we're going and find and see what we're going to do. I think we're going to glue the hole together. And I'm guessing that will then be it for part three. Yeah, we're, we're ready. We can put, glue the hole together. Okay, let's get this fuselage hull glued together. So how are we going to do it? We've got loads of different types of cement. We've got our Tamiya Extra Thin, we've got the Quick Setting, we've got the Normal. This is a blue in here called Plastic Weld and it's all evaporated. We've got our Mr. Cement S and our Mr. Cement SP. This is basically like a fast drying one of them. Um, and then I've got Mr. Cement Deluxe, which is a slightly thicker glue, um, which will be good to go around the bow with. And um, yeah. And then we've also got our an old Ravel contactor which won't come out of the tube because it's going to be blocked up because it always is but I don't think I need to use any of that um and, sorry I don't need to use this one I think I will be using the others now this area here is quite a wide area that goes together so I think the first thing I'm going to do is brush some of this on here on this wide area around the bow we'll see how long it takes to dry okay that's that's good that's that's staying wet for quite a while so what we can do now is brush some on this side as well and they will work together but remember we're not going to glue any of those posts or any of the um any of the uh bulkheads in we're just going to leave all them loose and then we're going to come along and just push these two halves together and because of all the work done previously it all goes together beautifully so there we are that's the that's the bow glued together. Well, that glue hasn't stayed wet long enough, has it? What am I done? No, it hasn't. It's a good primer to get things going. So, what we're going to do now is just concentrate on the middle. If we work on the ends and we've got a gap in the middle, we might end up forcing a problem. So we'll concentrate on the middle. Now, again, guys, this is for beginners. What you want to avoid, what you don't want to do now is start taping things up and then putting your glue in because if you do that you're going to start getting issues with the glue running under the tape if you put it under the tape and it'll ruin your surface detail same with rubber bands so what you do is you glue it hold it in place 
Give it a while for the glue to gel and then you can use your rubber bands. So what I'm going to do is put a rubber band on here. Like so. I'm just going to slide that over. Oops, slide that over like that and we'll have that down there. Sort of out of the way, okay? So now I can come along and put something in here. Let's get a cocktail stick. Where's my cocktail sticks? There they are. Get a cocktail stick or a couple. And I'm going to force this into the gap. And open up the gap. So now we can see we've got a, an opened up gap there that we can, can bury the glue into. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that back a bit as well. Hair on there. So we've got the cocktail sticks there, okay. So what I'll do is, put a, I won't put a rubber band on the other end yet, I can do that after. So we've got a little gap there for the glue to run into. So I'm going to get my Mr. Cement S and I'm just going to put some, in fact we'll go from the inside, I'm just going to put some in here. In fact I'm going to use a paintbrush because brush isn't long enough to get in there so I'm going to use a paintbrush and just what I'm going to do first of all is put some glue on these separators and then I can put some glue then in these fuselage joints and it should run along the gap and then pull that stick out and you can see the glue has gone all the way along there look okay so we'll leave that for now and then we'll put some in here. And watch where your fingers are on the back because the glue will capillary under anything it can. You can see now it's all under there. You can see we've got glue now all the way along there. So we've got a nice solid joint. I'll do the same here. Don't be scared to pour the glue in there. Get it in there, get it working. See, there's not enough in there, we're not seeing anything oozing out, so we need to get some more in there. We want to see glue oozing out, and that means we've got a properly welded melted. See, there's our touch there, look, and it's, it's gone under my finger. So we know it's sort of gone along there, but it's not sewing as oozing out. So, get some more in there. Perhaps open it up a touch. There we go, and then the glue will start oozing then. There we are, we're starting to see some. There we go, see the glue oozing out now. Okay, so now we've got this molten plastic, we can slide our rubber band along without any worries about it capillary under because it's too thick to capillary. You can see it's quite, uh, it's quite solid. So we'll put another rubber band on. I'm going to keep putting the rubber bands on from the stern actually because these, there's these little pins on the front. I've already broken one off. So I'll put another rubber band on here. Come on. that one there that will hold that together so we can leave that and just let that sort of gel off before we start pulling it about to glue the rest of it and there we go you can see we've got the glue oozing out all the way along there I've got my finger mark which is luckily between the rivets that's that's a bit of luck Okay, so because we've got a little gap there, you can see we've got a little gap that I can squeeze together. I'm going to put some more, put some glue in there and that'll work its way in. And you can see I'm, I'm absolutely flooding this with glue and the reason being is I want a nice solid welded joint. I don't want any dry areas. I want it to be uh, thoroughly actually glued together. If I give it a squeeze we should see, there we go, we've got, 
need to put some more up the front there. And if it's not, just give it a little pull apart and then push it back together again. And that will generally allow it to work in. What you don't want to do is end up with just a part of the joint glued together. Now that's come in handy. That that peg there has just come out, so it's holding it apart. So I can just get some in there and it will run down that joint then. Brilliant. So there we are. Not sure which one of these is actually holding it apart. It was one back here. Sorry, oh, I've just done that again. My finger, look. Oh, God's sake! Concentrate on this this end and not looking at what my hands do in this end. There we go. So I've, I've destroyed that area there. Never mind. It's all going to be beat up and rusted anyway. But um, at least you get to see what not to do. Okay. So in this area here, it's bloody great right box in the way, so you can't see what I'm doing. What I'm going to do is get rid of this brush and then I'm going to use the normal brush I'm just going to keep putting the glue in until I start to see something going on Oh and I've done it again with my fingers over here This is one of the problems when you start flooding things with glue it will capillary anywhere it can and, uh, yeah so take a bit more care than I have but I'll show you how to cure that to get rid of all that it's uh, quite an interesting little thing that is it's running plenty of glue in here a good solid welded joint. We don't want it all coming apart because it is under a bit of tension. We've got a little gap coming in there so we can put some glue in there. And there we are. Now on the front here, because it's thick plastic, I can use one of these little bulldog clips right on the edge. You can see I put tape on my bulldog clips to make them soft so they don't damage any detail also helps them to grip but um, that's going to stay there now clamped in place that's lovely there's lovely see okay it's actually quite a good way to depict rust isn't it? so um right so that's the bow all done now we'll move down to the stern and luckily we've got a bit of a gap here already so that's going to help us so let's go back to our paintbrush And we will put some glue in here. There we go, that's in there. So turn it over and see if we get any oozingness. Yep, you can see it oozing out of there. Right, so now we need to work on this from get another um, get another rubber band on there, I think. Just to hold all that together. Okay, and then on this end here, I'm gonna go back to my little brush. Just put a few drops in and let it pull in. You can see there we've got a gap, it pulls it straight in. And where there isn't a gap, it'll just build up on the surface. You see it going in there?
and there we go and of course because of those pieces of plastic I put in there we don't need to worry about all this mismatch and everything we're gonna have to do some sanding work up here anyway so I'm not really worried about the glue damaging anything up here Right, there we go. So I can get another, maybe I can hold that with a peg actually. Yeah, hold that with a peg, look. We can get some glue on the inside just to make sure it's welded. There we go. So that is the hull glued together. Now remember I haven't glued any of those posts into the, um, the port side and I haven't glued any of the bulkheads into the port side so you can see it's all still flexible and creaky and moany but we will deal with that before we uh <clears throat> we will deal with that before we do the um fit the decks just going to make sure we've got plenty of glue down in there and i'm going to stick a clothes peg on the edge of that i'm going to put it on the edge otherwise if you put it down here it might squeeze in here okay i mean it's quite solid so it probably won't but uh just in case okay and be very careful if you're going to use these if it's like a wing thin trailing edge be very careful because the pressure is applied over a, over a small area and it will actually the glue will soften the plastic and when you take these off you'll end up with an indentation in your model the shape of that clip so be careful with that so we can just go around now and check our alignment make sure everything's good make sure everything's glued and if we can get perfect alignment, then we can get away without using any filler at all. I mean, I don't think I'm going to need any filler anyway. Maybe a drop of Mr. Surfacer. But I don't think we're going to use any filler on here whatsoever. And there we go. Now, I can't remember if I mentioned it earlier or not, because my camera filled up. The memory ran out before I'd finished. And um, I can't remember if I mentioned that, but we need to put something up. If you watch Jason's build, you see I had to put a piece of plastic card in the front of the deck. And this one's no different, obviously. So a piece of 0.5 plastic card, or maybe a piece of 0.75 and then sand it back. It's about 0.6, I think, the gap. But yeah, that's all nice and smooth. What I'm doing here is just running what remnants I've got of a fingernail that I haven't bitten off. I'm just running it across there we want to feel that we've got a step both ways we've we've talked about this before with tanks and bombs and things so we've got a step that way i've got no step that way that means this side needs to go down so what you want to do is feel a step both ways which is basically the step is the glue oozing out that you can feel i'm going to put a little bit more glue in that area there which means i'm going to move that rubber band out of the way so i'm going to put some more glue in here because I feel it's a bit dry that's it and that's it for part three because I'm going to leave that now to set for a good sort of five or six hours probably let that settle down and um, let it all bond solid and then we can start looking at uh, this seam on the bottom so um, I'll see you for part four there's me saying I was going to do this building one um, I thought it was just like dun, 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 done almost like Lego but it's not is it so uh, I'll also show you how to get rid of these glue marks in here, but you must make leave them to go hard. You mustn't try and do it when the glue is when the plastic is soft. So there we are, guys. Pretty quick build, eh? See you for part four. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. I expect this stands good enough now to put this on. Stay safe, and um, yeah, there we are. And uh, you can see in there. Look, you can see through there. So if you left those ejector pin marks. And you painted this like a glossy black they would stick out like a sore thumb
because you can see down in there. See? If you can see that, but you can see down in there. So there we are. If you're going to use that stand, that is. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.